Uh, it is 601. We'll call this meeting to order. If everybody will stand and pledge allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, if you want me to move to silent prayer, please. Amen. Okay, I think everybody's got a copy of the meeting minutes from the last meeting. If you want to take a minute to look over them. questions I'll entertain the motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? All opposed? Minutes approved. Okay. Let's see if y'all have a copy of the financials. Operations? No. Uh, link computer core. Uh, it's towards the bottom. Yeah, it's on. What, the... what is that? Link computer core maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, that is with the sewer operations, Jim. Would you have any idea what that is? It's called Link Computer Corp. Uh, and it says maintenance for 317.75. Uh, I know I paid for that printer. Did she have somebody? Did she have printer problems or something? Not, not to my knowledge. She had something. I paid for that postage machine. Did they have problems with that? That's one of the only things I know about the period. Um, I can underline it and talk to her about it and see what it is. I, I just seen it and didn't recognize what it was. Yeah. If we can figure that out. Yeah, because I've I've had heard anything in this office about Link Computer Club. That's the first I've heard of it. <clears throat> There's another one there, a question right below that is Wex Bank. Yeah, I've seen that. For gas, which to my knowledge, Wex Bank is the one that had those marathon cards on us. I, I think so. I think, correct. I think it was Wex Bank on that. Um, I don't know what the charge for $75 they were supposed to be paid off. Unless it was a late time and she didn't get Possibly. That's what uh, I underlined it. I can talk to her when I see her tomorrow. Um, she has been really sick. Uh, she spent last weekend in the hospital. And... I guess we should come back, to, uh, come back to work, but she's still not feeling up to par, so she went to the doctor this morning and uh, just prayed that everything's fine with her, she can get back to work. 
um, the bond sinking count. Um, that's what's used to pay the uh, the note or whatever the bond that we have, correct? Um, I think so. I think that gets transferred over to pay them because we only pay once a year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's transferred over to pay or pay every year to the bond. Okay. Do it. That 2600 comes out of my account every month. That's servicing the loan that they had in 2008. Yeah, and we only have two more payments on that. Mm -hmm. We have one this year and then one in 2020, and I do believe that is it. We will be done with that bond. That's um, is there a penalty to pay early to get out of that? No, I don't believe there's a penalty to pay early. The only penalty is it's really going to take a bite out of our operating cost if something major happens. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm wanting to say that our payment is like $26,000. Okay. And if we spend $52,000 just to pay it off, we better cross our fingers and hope like everything <coughs> happens till we get the money back. Okay. Well, I got one question here. Uh, yes, sir. See, like everybody's uh, per dime that we get for these meetings yeah. comes out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. Mine came out of the suit. Uh, that I cannot answer for Jennifer. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I couldn't tell you why that happened to me. Because, I mean, it's not, I mean, that's not the norm, is it? Uh, to my knowledge, no, it should all be taken out of general fund. No, that should not come out of it. Yeah, to my knowledge, it should come out of general fund. Uh, we can make a note of it, and I'll discuss it with Jennifer. Yeah, that's notice it on there. Yeah. And that's on the sewer? Yeah. That I have waited. April meetings. It's on 4-18-2019. Oh, I feel I'm blind. I kept looking right there. <laughs> and I, I don't see where we split Jim's salary from general to right. sewer. Um, that hasn't happened yet. No, it hasn't happened yet because what would we talk about today? How did she put it? Uh, it's supposed to be out of half out of sewer and half out of general fund, right? Yes. Yeah. And there was something she was saying for some she reason. She was under the impression it was coming out of well Yes, yeah, so that's what it was. Can't, that's what can't. That's what she She thought what she meant for us to take half of it out of road aid since half of his job is the roads and the money is not in there to sustain paying him out of the road aid, which can't be used for that anyway. There's very few things that this road aid can be used for. And paying him is not one of them, so it has to come out of general fund. So she's going to have to start dividing it up half out of general fund, half out of sewer. But she was under the impression he wanted to take it out of the road aid. And then we found out she couldn't take it out of road aid. But it will happen. Yes, it will happen. I've got a problem here. Not a problem, but on an altar. I see where uh, razors at in the woods. Normally, they haven't been for the group here to explain and talk about things that maybe uh, we should be doing or something that we should be doing. We have had them before, so it's been three years since we had an altar stand up here and talk to them. Exactly, and I will be bringing it up here shortly. Okay. We'll be talking about audit. Well, I don't want to hear what they say. Yeah. I will be addressing the auditor situation here in just a little bit. Managers, anything else? Anybody has questions about? Uh, since we have questions, you want to just take and postpone the uh, the approval of these minutes until the next meeting, until we can get some answers, or do you want to go on and approve them now? Let's look at them again next month okay. and compare them to Yeah. I have no problem with that. I mean, there's questions that need to be answered. Like I said, the computer link thing, I have no clue. I've never heard of that. Me neither. You know, it may be something they come in here and they're a different name in here, but they bill as a different. Correct. Yeah. 
maybe something that we all know about. It ain't your security computer guy, is it? That you no, that's DTS security. If that come out, it'll either be under DTS or Kevin DeMott. Uh, yeah, um, this, this one that's listed on there, I've never heard of it before. So who made the motion to take the approval of the minutes? Um, Tammy. I'll make a motion. Need a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, now we'll move on to commissioner reports and we will start off uh, at the cemetery with Commissioner Roger Scott. Uh, everything seems to be going well. I haven't heard anything from Dave. Um, yesterday, the, it hadn't been mowed, but I know Dave well enough to know his Memorial Day is Monday, so he's going to wait till it's close. To this weekend, and he'll yes. have it pretty up sure to par. Yeah. Memorial Day. And the sack line was pretty much after we didn't do that. Oh, okay. What did he contract with them, maybe? Or? That I don't know. I just know that sack line was out there. He had an army out there. Well, I figured it would be this week. They'll get them all cleaned up. Uh, we got that light on. No, we don't have any light in your curtain The weather ain't permitted. Uh, well, you go on. Oh, well, there's dirt, lots of dirt. Jordan and I are going to move dirt. Uh, we found a cheaper route to do it. Once we get the dirt moved, we'll stick the curtain drain in and the light because we, if we put it in, we're going to be running over it and heavy vehicles constantly. Yeah. And yeah. We don't want to do and that. I told them to wait, hold off on moving that dirt because as wet as it's been, them hauling the dump truck in now there is going to make the cemetery muddy. It's going to tear things up, and we got to wait for July for until but we don't want it nasty at Memorial Day. So uh, right. if <coughs> Jordan and I talk about next week, if we haven't got moved, which we're not going to, I didn't even think we're going to, we're going to go out and push that dirt back up and at least give it one pile versus coming out where we're at now to make it look better. Okay. And uh, we did uh, spray out there today. We sprayed that dirt pile when we was going up in, and we sprayed along your uh, fence line and your view of the property uh, out there. We, did, we, we sprayed out there this morning. And then uh, we will mow this week. Well, we mow. Okay. We'll have it mow for Memorial Day. So. And, uh, we had to prove to get those new plots surveyed. Has he done any of that yet? To my knowledge, no. Uh, to my knowledge, Jennifer hadn't been able to contact him yet. Okay. Well, if, we, if you could put that in the notes. Yeah, put that in the notes and make sure we contact him. Uh, we very avid about getting in touch with him. And just survey out the first 200 plots, I think he said. Was it four? It was four. Jim. Remember that accident that was on the cemetery last Saturday? Yeah. Uh, there was a vehicle that hit that corner post as you turn up the street there. It goes up the hill. They car come around and hit that, destroyed that, and he's supposed to check the state police and get a copy yeah. of the. We get a copy of the state the police vehicle. report. So we may have to damage sure. that wall that we have to replace. And Leanne, how's those files coming along? It's coming. It's um, mm -hmm. I found a few that still own, and uh, I think I'm on O maybe. Well, that's getting there. <laughs> the bottom <laughs> half. Leanne's working on cleaning up all the files and what what's been paid, what hadn't been paid, what needs to be paid, notifying people, that kind of thing. No. With those files, is she making digital copies? I'm writing them down, and then we're going to put them on the uh, computer after I okay. filter them. Yeah, computer. right now we got to get it, this confusion straightened up. It's a mess, and before we can put it on anything, it's got to be straightened up. I'm just thinking long term. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. they're. And see, so Debbie had done all that mapping out there with the pictures and the, and Jennifer told me that you know that is ready to be put up on a on a slide or at least I don't know what you would call it it's more than a book it's yeah. Yeah. so 
she's got a lot of those pictures. I hope she has that organized as well. All right, so anything else, Tammy? No, I don't think so. All right, we will move on to streets and sidewalk with uh, Commissioner McCoy. We have a lot of potholes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we're just going to have to get with Jimmy and see yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to have to get with him because there's a lot of them that are very iffy. It's like on the edge of the road, half of it's in the road and half of it's in somebody's private block. Correct. But there's a lot of potholes. We're going to have a lot of utility cuts that's going to have to be addressed Yeah. Uh, this, this man another one yesterday. If you have anybody on Spring Street, drive slow. <laughs> it's a mess. Um, what about the uh, the gravel road in the cemetery in the curve? I noticed that it's washing away some of the gravel. I graded it up uh, two or three times, and we're basically down to grade the mud. You're going to have to have a little gravel. Okay. Uh, we graded it about all we graded there. That's a in that curve that's going to be unforgiving. My question is, if we build that up and change the pitch, would it make a difference? Okay. On these potholes, are you thinking about getting this uh, material up here, hardware store and store and putting in there? They got the asphalt up there in sacks. I always did that. I got that and it does a good job. Does it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll look right into that. Clean the holes out good and just tamper down good. And run over the never know holes there. Sounds like uh, the potholes out around uh, Alexander and that block around my funeral home. I would advise you not to drive back because there are so many of them that is beyond. That's going to take some patch. That is going to take a uh, professional company to come in and fix That is uh, all that whole block back there. Is, and part of it's hard for all that to maintain, and the other part is so much traffic that's increased with the rivers yeah. and stuff. I filled them up every spring, hot holes in the ground. Put that stuff up for asphalt. It's good stuff. Well, it's high. Expensive, so expensive, expensive, but it's good. Our semis deliver on down. Come around here. We can uh, big trucks all the time. To borrow the big trucks. You can do that. We can look at it and see what we can do. Uh, there may be some of the items we can fix, but some of the larger ones. Uh, we've got one out uh, near News Place that we look at. Well, we have to have pallets of that stuff. Fix that. So, you know, Did the stuff you was using, did you all still like it? Uh, what I've seen, I throw that over to Newton, who was in front of his house. I said, we have to babysit that stuff. I don't know, is it still holding up? It's still there. Yeah. Uh, and we put that stuff in, in, in the car. We didn't heat it, we didn't do it like we would normally do it, we did it like the, the guy said this was magical stuff, and we said, okay, we're going to see if it is. The only thing we did was... I guess it is. <laughs> because we just put it down the and drove it off. Yeah, it's still, it's still there. Off. Well, it'll pack down, and traffic run over and everything, but it'll pack down good. good I, think, stuff. I think the, uh, the potholes will have to be dealing with probably within the next few weeks. Um, well, that's why we tried this stuff, because uh, it comes, we can get it from Flynn Brothers, a uh, pallet at a time. And they give us three bags to try. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I was just asking it. It's supposed to be able to use underwater or anything to patch. It's supposed to be the greatest stuff since sliced bread. And, that's why I wanted them to try it. That's why we've been waiting to give a test, give a trial period to see if it's going to last. And um, if it is lasting, we can check into what a pallet's going to cost us and get a pallet full of this stuff. 
Um, so if it works that good, uh, they're going to cut us a big deal on it. We might as well get it. But we'll have to check to see how much pallet of it is called Flynn Brothers and see what they'll charge us for a pallet. Because the way they talk, they're the only dealer around this area for it. Okay. Well, that's all I have. All righty. Uh, we will move on to sanitation with Commissioner Green. Everything's looking real good. I like to caution people something about this being spring, a lot of storms and wind, a lot of limbs and weeds are big. They're piling them off of tall. And I, I caution people not to you know, do that because it's pretty hard for them to get that stuff. If they go put it, break it down and put it in another can or something, you know, and pile it up but way up or high, I've seen something pretty high. I know they don't like that. Now, we just did the cleanup day in uh, Jimmy Hill had football players and he took them around and some of the piles that were close enough to the edge of the road had easy access. Jimmy had the boys pick them piles of limbs up and they hauled them down to the sewer plant. Yeah. But we didn't do it behind people's houses yeah. and stuff like that. Well, what about that pile out there? Uh, Good like, yeah. Good luck with that. Jimmy has talked to him, Michael Dunaway has talked to him, and he keeps saying as soon as he gets his tractor rear back, he's going to take and clean that up. Who's that? Actually, talking about that, I put out over 45 notices to clean up. About 52 of them is already cleaned up. And there is some people complaining about the right of ways, this, that, and the other, about the neighbors. You know, that doesn't matter. It's just these people have got to start cleaning their own up. We don't have a right of way unless it's right on the road. So everything's going good with that. And the thing is, you've got the garbage company, when they go to tip them, I've cleaned up several messes where they dumped it right on the road and drive on. And they fly back these streets backwards and everything else. That's not good for people who live here or walk around and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have anything else? That's it. That's all I have. All right. right, we will move on to wastewater with uh, Commissioner Johnson. Well, he's fighting Walmart bags and aerators. <clears throat> I think it's a common thing. And, uh, I mean, as far as the specs and everything go, I mean, the, the test results of that were in good shape. And uh, he needs, he doesn't need enough bottles. If he weighed five more pounds, he would take on more. And the other man, I think, you know, I mean, we were, you get ready, we're going to look at the generator. Yeah, and, we're, bring it. we're going to talk about that in new yeah. business. Okay. And that's, uh, that's about it. All right, next thing on the, the agenda is this FEMA paperwork. Um, I don't know if, if y'all talked to Jennifer about this. Um, it looks like we paid $52,700 into FEMA for the work that we did to the sewer plant. They sent us paperwork back the other day that looks like we're actually going to receive $42,000 some odd dollars back from FEMA. But before they can do anything, we have to have Todd's name taken off all the paperwork and have my name added to the paperwork. That's what she has right here, remove Todd and Joe. It was supposed to be add Joe. I see that now, And uh, so as soon as we get that done, get that okay, you make a motion to remove Todd and add me to do the resolution for it. No second. And I thought I saw the file, which is maybe. I think it's in there, the resolution yeah, for it. Turn the money in. Joe, just a thought, uh, if we change any signatures around, I would be sure that whatever date that's on there conforms to whatever administration was in. Yeah, it's, it's basically... I to be sure you don't yeah. get on something that you aren't responsible for. Oh, no, it's, it, what it is is they can't change nothing until Todd's name is off, and then it's going to be basically the same paperwork with blank spots, and i got to fill it out and put the dates on. Okay, but, it, it, but the, the date of issue, or the date of occurrence or whatever, is under his administration or under yours? 
That's what I'm asking. You're talking, he's talking about he's talking when about was this was, when was this started? It was under Todd's. Yeah, it's under Todd's when it then started back in 2015. There needs to be some indication that it's under Todd's. It was under that administration, not under yours. And your signing off is, is a follow-up administration. But any liabilities with it seems to me fall under the former administration. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I will check into that. Get in yeah, I will check into that. Just there's nothing. They say there's nothing they can do until my name is on. So they have to remove Todd and put my name on it. Once that is complete, uh, the way we understand, they are going to send us a check for forty-two thousand some odd dollars back, um, which we, which that's the eighty-seven percent that they will reimburse. We're stuck with thirteen, so it added that about what it was. Right. Yeah. And uh, so forty-two thousand better than nothing. Yeah, that's right. So this is the designation of applicant's agent resolution. Be it resolved that, is that um, FEMA or what's that? Yeah, I would say it would be FEMA. Of oh, the government of the United States that, it, or, oh here, be it resolved that uh, the city commission of Bedford. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's uh, uh, the city of Bedford, Kentucky, that Joe Robinson, mayor, is hereby authorized to execute for uh, and in behalf of the city of Bedford, a public entity established under the laws of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, this application and to file it in the appropriate state office for the purpose of obtaining certain federal financial assistance under the Dis Disaster Relief Act, Public Law 288, 93rd Congress, or otherwise available from the President's Disaster Relief Fund. That the City of Bedford, a public entity established under the laws of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, hereby authorizes its agent to provide to the state and to the Federal Emergency Management Agency for all matters pertaining to such federal disaster assistance, the assurances and agreements printed on the reverse side thereof. Passed and approved this 21st day of May. Okay. Will McCoy made a motion to uh, do it. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Move a second. All in favor? All opposed? And it passes. Alright. Uh, next thing on the list. Uh, Jennifer and Leanne are willing to paint the inside of the community center um, if the city supplies the paint and the equipment. Uh, a different color? Yes, a different color. I think she was talking about light green. Yeah. Talking about. But uh, what color are we? We can't, we can't get people or like we can't get kids volunteer because kids can't be up on the ladder. Right. Um, so we have Jennifer Lee in that volunteering to do it because they can get on the ladder and reach the high areas. We have a lift in the firehouse I can bring over. Yeah. I don't paint. Yeah. Be safe. Yeah. I think there's one in the corner back there, isn't it? Is that right? No. Okay? Uh, we have a scaffold back there on wheels. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Now we work good for this. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I don't paint, so. Yeah. That'd be safer. Yeah. Yeah. You turn me loose with a paintbrush in here I'm, and the courthouse and that paint on. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't like the ladders. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, whatever. I mean, just, we can't get the kids in here to do it to volunteer to help no. them because and the ladders. The kids are terrible painters. So there's too much liability. Yeah. Yeah. What's the reason, Joe? There's all the paint. Um, it looks to me like pretty good. Look at that. I mean, it does, it's just old. Um, we're trying to clean up the city. We're trying to make everything better. We're trying to make us look better, not like a bunch of hicks from the 1930s. And uh, this, uh, this, I don't think it's ever been repainted, has it? Uh, this door's been painted twice. It's not that. Yep. I know go. I don't know who chose the color or Why do you? They were superb. Well, what I can, what I problem me, I do have so many other items and projects that we need the money rather than uh, put it something like this where we got it, <coughs> it look that bad. That's the reason I'm against it. 
understand. I understand, and uh, I mean that's why we bring from the commission uh, to let everybody you know they're wanting to do it. They will supply the labor. You know, bank bank street labor's high. You know, it's going to be on their hourly time here. We don't have to pay nobody extra. So it's just uh, all the expense will be out is paint and tape and yeah. Brush. 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 yeah. Well, this going to consume a lot of paint. I don't know. I don't paint. I hate paint. You're probably 15 gallons. This will, I just had a question. When we done on their time or on the city's time? Um, I don't know. That I don't know. It's I'm on the city's time and he's doing their job. Mm. But uh, I don't know. That 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 you see what I see. Do you? Can you? Um, I tell you what. If we wait until next month, why don't you all come up with a plan? What color are you going to paint? How much paint do you think it's going to take? Get yeah. a presentation, bring it to us. When you know what to, when how you plan on doing it? Whether it's going to be. They do it. I think we want to do it. And then next month we'll we'll have a solid number that we yeah. work with. Just have a presentation. Well, this will be a lot of paint. Yeah. All right. Well, we move that till the next meeting. I'll make a motion to wait till next meeting to get a and get a presentation of how much we're looking at. Mr. Green, yeah. second. All in favor, move it to the next meeting. Motion approved. Okay. Now comes the second reading of the planning and zoning. Before you can read it. We have to vote on whether we want to read it or not. So we have to have a motion and a second and then a vote. Does anyone want to make a motion to do the second reading of the plan and zoning? I'll make a motion. Bill McCoy, anyone second it? I'll second it. Tony second it. Is everybody in favor? Right. Zoning ordinance, Trimble County, Kentucky. Be it ordained by the City Commission of Bedford, Kentucky, whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court adopted this zoning ordinance on November 19, 2018, whereas the purpose of which is to divide the County of Trimble Commonwealth of Kentucky into districts of such shape and area as are best as are deemed best suited to carry out these regulations, whereas the ordinance regulates the uses of buildings and land for residential and agricultural uses or for business and other purposes, to prescribe penalties for violations, to provide for enforcement of the same, to implement a planning and zoning commission, and to implement a board of adjustments. Whereas the ordinance proposes to further the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan previously adopted by the Trimble County Fiscal Court, whereas the ordinance is now before the Bedford City Commission for adoption, now therefore the Bedford City Commission finds it is in the best interest of the cities of the city of, of the citizens of the city of Bedford to adopt the following zoning ordinance for Trimble County, Kentucky. Introduced and given its first reading, uh, I think was last time, wasn't it? No, it was time for last. Time. Okay, so was that in March? Yeah. And uh, given second reading and adopted at a duly convened meeting. If we make I know this is out of order, but uh, I, I wanted noted that. I was going to, I'm still voting no, but she started reading before I could get to the no part. Uh, so we had four, which doesn't matter. We had four vote yes, so that's no, just, the second no, reading. Just because we uh, want to hear that reading, that the time. No, that's the second reading. That puts it through. That's now it has to be published, and it's, uh, it's done. I wasn't going through most, I'm not, this, I agree with Newt there. It sounded like you said you had to read it yeah. before you could allow the vote. No, it, it gets read. If they vote so to this, read it. So you just allow a second. A second they just reading. voted the second. But they didn't vote to accept it yet, though. They, all they did is vote to have to read it to allow it to be read. Yeah, but to, to my knowledge, if it was read the second time, because you vote to read it, and once it's read the second time. Then you vote to, to, accept. Vote, to accept it. You, it is, it's two different things you had going there. Two different things. Yeah, she started reading before I could come up and ask for the no vote. You, 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 make, vote again, you make a motion yeah. to adopt the ordinance that she just read, and then it's your own vote on it. 
and, and, and adopted. Right, but that, that's completely different what I've told you, because I told you, if you read that, it the second that, time, that, it's all automatic for you. What you, you could have done with it either way. You yeah. could have just said, well, I vote for the, for the uh, ordinance. But the way you stated it, you said that we have to read it first, and you want to vote on that. And I think that's what the council understood. And then, oh, I'm, that may have been my. Yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. it doesn't matter. You yeah. still have to make a vote on the issue itself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to Well, then well, well, that's fine. I just wanted to state it. I was going to vote no, but she started reading it. Yeah. yeah. And, It'll just uh, clarify it if you vote now. Yeah. Um, so. Um, and as it was read, it's adopted as the county, what was made for the county. Even if we adopt it and the county doesn't go with it, yeah. we're off the hook. Huh? You still have the ordinance. Yeah, if you you still got it. it. You still you got, got it. You're voting to take it, whatever they got. No, 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 you're not. Yeah. This is the boss. You're not obligated to take it. Yeah. They we're opting in out. or out. Well, okay, you take the you vote out. out. Yeah. You got to take the vote out. It's like we're opting in or we're yeah. opting out. But you have to vote it yourself because you're an entity you of know, yourself. You're a government owned So, do you vote with the county or you don't? If the county yeah. does not. Then we would just. Then we can. It would not be to, to our advantage as a city to keep it proper because of all the officiation right. that would be associated with it. That's the right, uh, So, and uh, then if the county, let me get this right, Bob. The county does adopt it, and we opt in. You already. Then the, you've already taken. It. You're in line with that. You're going to work right, out. and we don't. Then they will be the governing body of that ordinance, we not us. What, what they do. Sounds like we get the carpet from the whole. Okay. So wait till they get theirs done over there, and then. Because if we do that, that we've already done this like how many times? Right. Six yeah. times? Yeah. yeah. Do what you want to do. I can't vote. I'll make a motion to adopt it as it is and to follow whatever uh, action that the county takes okay. with their plan and zoning ordinance. So you want to follow the county? Correct. Or do you want to accept? So if they. We're accepting it, but if they redact it, it, it comes off us. Yeah. yeah. They have to go with it in order to be. But they may, even if you accept it in the next meeting, we can turn around and vote right back. Right. Okay. So, so in August, whatever they decide, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll you're, either you're already in flow line. with it or yeah. we'll you just, redact you're it. Just on board, that's it. You don't have to do anything if they vote it in. So if they don't vote it in, then you can. Take it out. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, uh, Ruben Coyne made a motion to accept it. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, she second. Any second? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for taking the step. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. And I know it's resistant. Well, but I also know that you've got to do some of the right. Yeah. I know, but I mean, I talked to you about my opinions on it, and I can't get around it. I cannot. I understand. Uh, I, and, uh, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Uh, I agree that there's problems with it, always will be problems with it. There's not a system in the world on that problem. But at some point, we're going to have to move forward, we're not going to have anything. He's talking about ordinances, uh, not to be the drum, but okay, the road that he was talking about. Yeah. He probably had an ordinance that doesn't allow big trucks on the roads. But where is it? You know, it's in there. We have no way to organize what we're doing, and that's what we're about to do. Yeah, and if we don't, and we're this one little spot, and they go with it, if we don't, then everything that's not wanted is going to come to our spot. You got to do something. You think the county's coming up? Let it go, to Milton. Then Bob? Milton, the county's still looking at where meetings every month, sometimes twice a month. And they are, yeah. uh, they are discussing. That's why I was kind of wondering. They've been attended. I can't say they've been well attended, yeah. but they've been attended. And that's just the city of Milton. I mean, it's not the... It's where it was. The city of Milton has the same obligation to the city of Bedford. 
They're a separate entity legally. They have to vote for themselves. They're not. Okay. Well, let's move on. Uh, this is kind of morbid. I, I have no clue what it, I mean, I heard bits and pieces of it, but uh, Rick Stucker is wanting us to give him permission to dig up the cremation grave of Don Proctor. His family would like to split the remains up amongst themselves. Who's Brent Stucker? Proctor. So somebody's going to go out there with a shovel? I don't think it who he is. I don't think so yeah, either. Uh, don't you? I, I think it's desecration. Is it falls under desecration laws? You have to have some kind of order. Yeah, have some, yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. yeah. that's yeah. like an exhuming <coughs> remains. The only thing I can tell you was when I was in the excavation business, I was involved with a couple uh, graves we moved. And when we moved, the corner had to be there. There was a state inspector with us there. And we had to sign the forms for a half hour. And they stood there until we moved. We raised one up. We married somebody, and the other girl was married too. We got married two Marys, and buried in the wrong place. We had to pick them up and switch them. That's all we had to do, but it was a long, long time process. So the coroner has to allow for exhumation. That's yeah. the only one that has to I mean, I, 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 so send him to the corner. Yeah, I think we need to vote no right now until yeah. we investigate this further to make sure so. we're not stepping yeah. on some we laws. Don't know what kind of mess is going to be either. Yeah. 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 I make a motion we don't do anything with that. No, or vote no for that and have him we'll talk go to the, the corner. corner. Have the corner contact us and let us know if yeah. it's legal or not. I'll say. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, Apple Festival Committee contacted us and they want us to uh, give them permission to street for the street closures from September 8th or September 7th to September 8th of 2019. I'll make a motion. Do we have a I'll second? All in favor? All opposed? Joe, I have something for you. Yes, yes sir. Okay. It's concerning uh, out here on the US 42 East. The street owners out there, I've got three, uh, three places out there, they want to be, come in the city. They, they live at, they join the city limits now. I brought that up last year and uh, <coughs> They promised me to go do something in here, but never did do it. So, are you talking about the annex property got to where Lois Tingle or Lois uh, eight areas? Frank Boyd, it's all in Frank Boyd. Frank Boyd, that's that. They, uh, that, uh, Frank, we got a sewer system, and every one of them has an individual hookup. So, it ought to be automatic that they be annexed in the city. They would not order to the sewer. So Nothing's automatic. I found that out. Nothing is automatic. We are working on some well, annexations out there. The thing is, and they have to be contiguous. If they're out past where Lois Ader's property is, we have to get Lois Ader and them annexed first, but we can't just jump over them and start another one. We have to be contiguous <coughs> and work straight out the road. So Joanne is working on the Lois Ader. There's four well, properties right there that she is working well, for. Yeah. There's four uh, properties that she's working. Once we get them in X, then we can start the next house and go on. Those four properties she's working on can continue this three more properties. But yeah. right after yeah. Lois yeah. and but well we can't do nothing with them until we get these first four done in X. And then once that happens, then we can take go on and continue. Well, if we ever put a sewer in a place or something that's not in the city, I don't think we should do it. Well we've already got certain places that certain well, not like in the city. This yeah. should be Automatically, if it, we do it, we should be in the city. Well, yeah, sure. the way I look at it, it don't have to be in the city. They should. No, we don't. We'll pay the, you know, no, we don't. We, 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 we put them out. We put no, we put them out there that service that's, for that's them. One of, that's one of the things I think we need to do in the city. I'm just sitting here in the city and telling you the if you're going to run sewer lines, then everybody that's in front of that's on that sewer line, like a railroad track. Yeah needs to be part of the city. 
And so they have to add them to men. I would suggest no, that. Otherwise, you're, you're putting yeah. in sewer for people that don't pay Well, and this, Yeah, but the thing is about it now, actually, and, we yeah, charge one rate, of, one rate of sewer money for people in the city. And outside the city, we can actually charge them a higher tax rate on their sewer. But we don't. We haven't as of yet. But why not try to get people into the city? That's my point. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, that's my point. That's another point. You point. go out there the and there's a hook, but you get them in with you. Okay, yeah. well, what in the city? Okay. But if you don't get in the city, you're going to pay twice as much. Oh, yes. That's what the kid asked me about. Yeah. 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 Wanting to get in the city. We're working toward it. Just we have to go in on it. Do what? said, we're working toward it. Just we have to get the one she's working on now, we have to get them in then once those are finished in it, then we can no, jump to the next to section of houses. So we have to have these first. We can't skip over these and do this section either. Yeah. These are joining the city now. We went through that in Portland. What, these, what was they there? These three are joining. Yeah, not to my knowledge. Well, they are. Yeah. Well, they're joining. Yeah. They're not there at the end of that last house in the city, and they're right there. Go on out, 42 east. Why, why don't we get her to go ahead and look into it? Yeah. We'll but get her to look into it. That's where they've been. Uh, it was done last year, but uh, it didn't take care of us. Yeah. But uh, as they join, they join right in our city. Yeah, I'm connected. all for anybody we can in the city right now. Yeah, I'm all for anybody we can annex into the city. Yeah. Uh, but we have to do it a certain way. We can't just say, oh, we let, you know, these people will live 10 miles out. Well, we want to be part of the city. We can't do. We got. It's got to enjoy. It's got to be uh, continuous. It's got. It's got to touch. You can't skip over properties. We have to touch them. I mean, they may be dying to get in the city, and maybe we can do it. But we have to get everybody between them and the city first. We're not skipping over property. We're tying in. It's like joining. Joining one in the city. That's a nice house. So Lois and Renee, where Renee's at. Yeah. Going there for, or not in the city right now? That is a question that is... Well, Renee voted in the city, yeah. so did Lovett. Yeah. Because yeah. all the paperwork were done. That's where voter registration is so messed up around the city. Yeah. But I actually thought that my husband voted for me and she could in the same house. Mm. The yeah, I love us in the city. Yeah, that's one headache we're dealing with to get straightened out. It's a middle organization. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're trying to get it straightened out. This is all connected, Joe. There's no way of jumping over anything. It's connected to the city. Already, the city's nice house, sir. It's high up there. Uh, we, we are working with Mr. Green, so I promise. We are trying to end it more people. Because they go, they ask me all the time. I guarantee you, we are working on it. Um, okay. Just it's a slow process and we, we have to go in a certain order. Yeah, I keep telling them. Now, don't be like parents, you know, when they keep telling me, you know, we go get it done in the year and don't do nothing. Oh, no, I guarantee they you. they come to me and they get on me. Well, I guarantee you, if, if I tell you we're working on it, we're yeah. working on it. I won't be, I uh, know what's going yeah. on. Well, there's a, you know, there's a census every 10 years, so there's a census in 2020. Yep. And we'd like that annexation, all that to be done for the census. So, it, so you gotta seriously, pay. seriously, it needs to be done in six yeah, months. Because we went to this training and on this census, for every person that we are undercounted, it costs the state of Kentucky $2,000 a day per person because they were undercounted. Well, when you do the census, why don't we agree to the we are that's exactly the plan I was just thinking about that today how you might but we need to, to get with the surveyor we need to keep in mind these people first people are asking that's what we need and we are working with work, 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 work. okay uh, I have a question anybody know how the farmers market's doing um, I was up there all day Saturday they right now they have uh, you know, they didn't have very many booths set up because right now there's no people with vegetables because gardens were so yeah. late for the rains. Um, <clears throat> I was up there and I haven't seen that many people in Bedford in years. They had a great turnout for no more than what they had. Each vendor sold stuff um, and they had did some changes on their original bylaws. They weren't going to allow 
small animals or anything in there because of the proximity to food. But with Ralph Hance being from the University of Kentucky Agriculture, he got all of his license, he got everything arranged around to now they can add small animals into it, but it, it's the proximity of where they have to keep it away from food items. They have to have a table at each end with hand cleaners on it. So if you rub the animal or whatever, you can clean your hands before you go touch the vegetables. Um, and they've got that approved and they're gonna start doing small animals. They are, um, they have trackside butcher shop over in Camelsburg, agreed to, he's gonna load uh, freezers up on the trailer. He's gonna come over and sell fresh meat out of the trailer. He said he would have been here this past Saturday, but that is gonna require him to hire a new employee to do this and he just didn't have the ploy to do it right now. But he is looking into hiring a new employee to come over every Saturday and set up and sell fresh meat. We got people that uh, um, are gonna come do uh, fresh eggs. We got two vendors, I think, that are wanting to sell fresh eggs. One gentleman was supposed to be up here with a bunch of different types of flowers, but he called in Saturday morning and was definitely sick, so he didn't get to come up Saturday. Uh, and it really is probably no more vendors than what we had. We had one, two, three, four, I think six booths, and the whole side of the courthouse between the liquor store and the courthouse, that was jam-packed all day long, and they were parking around back of the courthouse. We had people walking up from town, coming up to look at what we had going on, and uh, it, it really surprised me that they had that much of a turnout for no more vendors than what they had. And I think when they start getting some vegetables coming in, we got a guy who lives in Madison, but he has a farm over here, raises sweet corn and pumpkins, which that'll be a fall type thing. But um, he said he's going, he can bring all sweet corn and pumpkin up here, y'all deal with, that we can deal with. And uh, so he's planning on coming up. We got uh, vendors that are going to be putting honey out. Uh, we got people wanting to do uh, jams and jellies, but before they can do it, they have to. Uh, had a microprocessor license to where somebody comes out and checks their home to make sure their process is right to where there's no botulism or anything like that. Uh, you know, and, and I was really tickled with the amount of people that showed up up there Saturday for no more vendors than they have, and we're going to just pick up more vendors all the time. Uh, I don't know what all they was talking about. They've got a list of stuff that's supposed to be coming out to be vendors in it, and they're asking more and more all the time. That, the board, the uh, farmer's market board is working their butts off. I mean, they're doing an excellent job. Uh, and I think it's going to turn out really good. It's going to start bringing a lot of people into town on Saturdays. Good. Mm -hmm. I drove down by that. It looked like a pretty good crowd. Yes, it was. Yeah. A very good yeah. crowd. Good crowd. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, uh, now uh, for new business, first thing I want to bring, we had our cleanup day Friday night and Saturday. Um, we asked volunteers to come up and help. The only one that came to our aid was our high school and our middle school football program. <laughs> Sorry. That's one of our football players there, my son. I'm gonna turn it down. But uh, they come up here, we had, what, 15 people on Friday night, 15 of the football players? We had 10. Oh, 10 of them? Um, we had, you sure? I thought there was more than that. Five more, five more. You count me and the coach at 12. Okay. Well, 10, and I thought there was more than that. Uh, then we had four show back up Saturday to help. Uh, they helped Jimmy, pretty much supervised them. Thank you so much for helping out that Jimmy. Uh, he took them around. He showed them what Thanks, they needed Jim. to do. And uh, they did a lot of cleaning up. They got several bags of garbage. Uh, they went around, uh, they did some trimming of the shrubs and stuff around the community center here. Jimmy took the four back out Saturday. They went around and picked up limbs after limbs. They even went out, they cleaned up the dollar store parking lot uh, to prove to the dollar store we're not just trying to be, you know, Hitler or nothing, that we're trying to help them out. You know, we want to help, you know, we want everybody to jump in and help. They, uh, I mean, Jimmy said, Jimmy had nothing but praise for the boys, and they did a really good job, and um, I was seeing it, I wanted to see that if the commissioners would want to take and do something back for their program to help them out, because I tell you, the program is in dire straits. Uh, are they gonna be able to have one? Yes, they are having, they have a JV team, and they have a middle school team this year. Um, the thing about it is, last year, I'm, I'm coach for middle school. And last year, we got in trouble at several games because 
None of our, very few of our uniforms matched. Um, we had kids out on the field wearing the same numbers. And the coaches for the other teams were throwing tantrums about us having dual numbers out on the field. So then we got to where if we had to sub someone in, they would run off to the side, would come one coming out, run off side, jerk his jersey off, stick it on another kid and let him go out on the field. Uh, the program, I mean, it just, it's in, in disarray, it's really bad. Well, uh, what would it take to, uh, <coughs> to get to purchase uniforms for them? They're the most expensive uniforms you buy for a school system, okay? Well now, we had a lady that uh, she has passed on now. I don't know if anybody knew her. It was, uh, oh, uh, Tammy Feltz. She had a company she went through and she got uh, really good prices for the middle school a couple of years ago. I mean, super good prices. Uh, but the thing about it is, at the time she ordered them, she only ordered 11 uniforms. Well, and, and Joe, they got these standards now. They're getting real strict on these standards. Yeah, stand I know, I know that. that protection, all that stuff. Yeah. Believe me, I go through it every year when we talk about this Here's stuff. I know all that. Yeah. You got some districts around here that are pretty well off. You got Walton Verona. Yep. You got some of, the, some of these big schools around here that have go through uniforms every other year, something like that. Parents are well off. Yep. See if they want to get rid of their of their uniforms, and they will have a lot more uniforms because their teams are a lot bigger. But the thing about it is, they're not blue and gold. Mm -hmm. well, that was okay. yeah. See if you can find some. We have none blue. We played one that's blue and white. Uh, we played none that's blue and gold. Uh, but it, yeah, I mean, it was embarrassing. We go to these other schools and they're laughing at us because we had kids out there with holes in their pants. Uh, the jerseys, the back of it ripped open. And, but like I said, we ordered the 11 for the middle school the year before last. The lady died. Uh, and it was not thought ahead that we only got 11 and we ended up with 23 players. So we had 11 with new uniforms and the other 12 had to go in and dig through uniforms from the 1970s and 80s to try to find something that was not, had rat holes eaten in them and stuff like that. And it's in, it's in dire straits the program is. And it was embarrassing going out and going to these games and hearing them laughing at us because of our uniforms. So none of our tax money goes for any of these programs? No, sir. School? No. The secondary program. Our, our, our football yeah. programs, they yeah, are optimal. They are so yeah, we're talking about Metcalf County or someplace way off. Yeah. Maybe and get the same. Even another state? Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, that's the place where we need uniforms. And you can contact the athletic uh, uh, director of the athletic yeah. association in each state. Indiana's close. They play football at the Wazoo. Uh, a lot of them. I'm from Ohio. They play football at the Wazoo. You know, and which, with me being a coach, I have to recuse myself from this discussion it has to come on you all uh being his coach it's a conflict of interest so i have to recuse myself from being in on this decision but i just wanted to bring it up i mean these kids they work their butts off and they play hard and i am strictly for the community i want this community to do well and these kids are part of our community i love every one of them to death they're the only ones that showed up to volunteer to help us when I brought it up to them, they said, absolutely. They're the only ones that volunteered to show up here to help us. And I think we need to turn around and help them back somehow to get them some uniforms or some equipment or something. Because uh, we got some kids, we had to take shoestrings out of one kid's shoes to fix another kid's shoulder pads last year during a game so they could play because the ties in the front, it's a shoestring, were so rotted that when he get hit, he just break from his head. The hand-me-downs from high school. The hand-me-downs from 1970s high school. It, but you, that was a big thing. But it's yeah. got it's 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 Of course it wouldn't. It's but it was. It's one of those very That's when they played football. Well, they have, <coughs> they went to, they're not allowed to have a booster club anymore. They, they are not allowed to have, we started, a lady started up last year, she was extremely awesome. Her name is uh, Cassidy Tolliver. She started doing uh, fundraisers for the school. For, and 
that turned out to be a headache within itself. Well, she wanted to actually start up a booster club. And the school system refuses to let us do a booster club, said because it's an Article 19 or something like that. It's already part of the existing booster club. No, said we can't have a booster club. So she has started Friends of Trimble <coughs> County Sports or something like that. That and she is be separate from the school system. Yeah, well, it is separate from the school system, but the money is allotted to the school. It is brought to the school and paid to the school for the football uh, sports program. I think it should be done because we, when we put football in, I was chairman of the board when we put football in, okay? Yeah. And there was a lot of enthusiasm, but there still is a lot of enthusiasm. The <coughs> biggest problem is safety that goes to the uniforms, but also goes to the numbers played, right? We just sent out all the helmets, um, had, had to have all the helmets reconditioned with new style padding in the helmets, have them check for cracks, have them check for face masks. And don't hold me to this, but I think somebody said at a cost of like $5,200. That's probably right. I can tell you that the high school, mm -hmm. when I was on the board, the height, this was oh, no. yeah. 14 years ago, yeah. they cost $1,200 a piece, yeah. the uniforms did. And you got 24 of those, two sets of team. Yeah. You got some money in that. Now, that's what I'm saying, there's ways to get around that. Yeah that you can do, but you've got to have, it, it would be a real effort. It would be yeah. a real com a commitment to do it. See what I'm saying? Well, I just bring it to the board it is, as a coach, because I know these kids deserve something. They played their hearts out. We had a great season last year. Um, we only got beat by two teams, and we should have won those. Uh, but we had injuries, and we lost a couple of our best players. My son got his arm broke, uh, and we lost to some good players, and we should have turned out a lot better, but it's the best season we've had in a while. And those kids worked their butts off, and a lot of them are coming back this year. And I don't want them kids to have to walk out there with holes in the crotch of the pants where mice have eat the pants out trying to play a game of football in front of hundreds of people. And I just... I'll make a motion <coughs> to make a donation of $250. There's no way we can pay for all the uniforms. Not well, that price. No, um, the thing I, ta I talked to Coach, I, said, I don't know if they will want to do a monetary thing or if he wants to get some prices together and bring it to us so we can see what, because he knows what they actually need and uh, have him bring that to us and maybe we can, you know, we can do a little more if he's needing something else. I mean, he may already have a sponsor for uniforms. He may already have a sponsor for, well, the money that come out of the funding from last year did the helmets this year. Uh, How soon do we need them, Joe? Anything like these? Uh, well, is that, uh, season don't start until August. Um, so they'll be basically wearing just practice stuff and practice stuff. I don't care if it tore up, they're going to tear it up anyway. Um, but I mean, they may need a piece of equipment. They may need uh, uh, padding for the field. Uh, they may need new shoulder pads. Um, and $250 is not going to do a whole lot, but I wanted, I talked to the coach about if he could see what he was absolutely in dire need of and let us know and uh, to see what kind of cost we were looking at, try to find it. Because I know there are places you can get it cheaper. Uh, my son playing baseball this year, they had to have a special type of baseball paint. And every place we looked, it was $59 for the baseball pants. We looked at Epic Sports, we got them for $8.99, the exact same thing, brand new. And uh, so, but I just wanted to bring that to attention, but I have to recuse myself from any type of vote or motions on this to the end that I am on the coaches. Well, I made a motion already, so it's on the floor. Well, if, you know, we make a donation for the help that they gave us. That's and then if they have other needs and wants and want to come back and see what we can do. That's what we should do. So I'll make a motion to go with Will's idea and donate 250 and then let them use it for what they need right now and see what else they need. I know it's just, you know, it's going to be a drop in the bucket, but it's a start. I mean, they're hitting everybody. They, uh, they're getting uh, a, uh, just a generic note together and they're going to send it to all the businesses in the area. They're going to send it to LGME. They're going to send it to... Uh, Everybody they know, and uh, the 
friends of Trimble Sports are, is really uh, into this, and she, she sticks with it. And she's going to get funding from other sources, but uh, I think we, knew, we really need to show these kids that we back them and we appreciate the hard work they do. Well, I'll second that motion with Will. And to begin with, we can go ahead and donate $250 and as a goodwill and see what happens later on. This for helping us clean up. Yep. For their support so, the city. since Joe's recusing himself, okay, we've got a here. second and all in favor. So we'll donate the 250 Thank to start with. Thank you so much. This means a lot to these boys. All right, next thing, uh, Mr. Hoskins, uh, I have talked to Jimmy. You know, we had uh, several months back talked about giving him like $200 a month for pool purchases because we had nothing down at the sewer plant. I talked to Jimmy, I talked to Newt, and they have went through and got us an inventory of everything that belongs to the city, all the tools that we have now and um, they will be working on what we still need to have. I don't know if you understand it, if you want to look at it, um, but that is an inventory that they got together of what belongs to the city now. Um, and as we go along, the more we get for the city, Jimmy can take his stuff home and he won't have to be bothered with his stuff using it. And um, we'll just keep a running inventory and that way we know what we got because Jimmy said when he come in here, he, they had nothing, he had to use his tools. Uh, so that's, that's where we are right now as far as the inventory. <coughs> and while you are looking at that, we have a couple other things for the sewer plant that we need to talk about. Um, first thing, Jimmy needs a boat. I've been down there and seen his little boat, and he's been out in there, and with that boat, it's so small that when he has to reach over the side, pull the aerators up, the, boat, the top of the boat comes this high up out of that pond, or it comes down almost and goes under. Come on, Jim. One of these days, he's going to be drinking some good old pond water down there. It's a matter of two. Yes, yeah. You know, so we need to get him, it's, it's a safety issue. Um, I've been down there, and I tell you, I, I don't know what all went on before I've been down there. Jimmy has very viable complaints um, because he is holding this sewer plant together with spit and duct tape. And that is ridiculous. He's got to have stuff down there to make that plant run. Because if that plant don't run, the city don't run. And we're done. So we've got to keep that plant running, um, and we got to make it safe for him. We gotta make it safer. Jordan helps him out. Jimmy Hills helps him out. We need to make sure that he's got what he needs to be safe and to do his job correctly. Jim, so, what kind of boats do you think you need? No, I just need a three boat with long that's deep beside it. I don't care. The one I got is ten foot. I don't care about length. I don't need length. I need one with a wider beam and a taller size that I can work over the side. Uh, I've been using this one. It was there when I come there. Uh, I've been told by previous administration, hold on, we're going to get you one, we're going to get you one, we're going to get you one. Can you get us a price? Not hardcore because I don't know when I can get it. now. If we can find a used one to buy off of somebody, <coughs> you know, but we've talked about that and I don't I don't know don't think that's a good written. idea. Yeah. If we go purchase a new one, we're looking at somewhere between eight hundred thousand dollars for the boat on. Them. But we don't need the trolling motor, we don't need the boys, we don't we've already got all of them. We just need the flat bottom of them, them boat. Just something. Those aerators, uh, we're going out there three times a week now. Yeah, at least three times a week, we got to go out on the ponds and clean those aerators out. Uh, Can you get me a quote on on a new boat? If you bring forth a quote, I wouldn't have a problem making a motion to purchase. Um, like they, I I don't know what else to buy them other than Bass Pro. And I looked at them today, and they were like 870 bucks. 
for a 50, a 40, a 52 inch beam. The one we got down there is a 36. Is that completely sufficient for what you need? Yeah. Yeah, the one we got is a 36. It's only that wide. So when I lean, yeah. it goes. It's like a canoe. Yeah. I'll make a motion to put a cap on 900,000, whatever. 000. To, to purchase a new John boat. Uh, no more than $1,000. If you go to Pastoral Cabela's, is there a thing where the state or and then if you like that, you give it cheaper. Well, I can check. You'd like to check into it. I can check. I did check with Kentucky Surplus and they have nothing. And okay. Um, we'll make a motion. Did we get a second? I'll second it. And then for a thousand dollar cap. Cap. Um, Maybe we can sell the old one. I don't care what you do with it. And about like number two Washington. <laughs> Jeff was wanting to fish a boat. Maybe that'd be just perfect. Oh, Okay, now the next thing is going to cost a little bit more. Uh, uh, let Jimmy explain this. And then I'll, yeah, and then I'll uh, throw it back to you. Well, first off, only we got Jimmy's license. His license has been renewed, so he is continuing good with their wastewater. Yeah, they get them back to me. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, <coughs> when, we, when I went up to conference, uh, the director comes out and gives his little speech he always gives. He made two important points that I cared about. Uh, one of them was he said nobody's getting into this field they tried to get us to get people come recruit they tried to recruit they can't get nobody else to get into this kind of work he said we still got to have the same money to operate so our licenses are going up 300 percent in cost starting next year 300 percent then the second thing he goes he said I sat here last year and I told you all we were gonna quit looking the other way on these fine wool fences. He said, it's been a year since I told you we were gonna do it. He said, you've had time to prepare. He said, it starts tomorrow. And that's what he said. He said, we are expecting an 80% increase in revenue. They're after the money. I'm telling you, they're after the money. And so from your all standpoint, we've had three offenses that we've been rolled up numerous times on, and that's probably what they're gonna go after. One of them we took care of when we entered the interlocal agreement with Newcastle. That one's took care of. Uh, one of them is the trees on the lower pond on that side over there. They're gonna nail us on that. And then the other thing is generator. And I can attest, I have seen the, it, as at this point, is it has not been a write up, but a high recommendation. It's a, what they call an NOV, notice of violation. That's what they write us up for. They haven't sent it over to enforcement yet. But with this new director they've got, he's going to move them steps along. And uh, so with that, uh, Jimmy had looked at, uh, what's the name of the place, American Surplus? Kentucky surplus. Kentucky surplus. Because um, we, Jimmy priced the generator back when I first came into office, and it was uh, like twenty-seven thousand eight hundred and some dollars for the generator that he needs big enough to run that plant. Sixty cents. Yeah. Uh, well, well, through Kentucky surplus, you can buy used these used generators. Um, they have one on here. It is a trailer mounted generator. It has 2,914 hours and it will only cost $5,500 on the trailer. Or there's another one we can move to the high usage unit and replace with the other with a unit that's only got 314 hours on it. And that one there would be 8,500. I told Jimmy to check to make sure that these weren't 1930 model military generators to make sure we can still get parts and stuff for them if something happens. And they are not. Uh, Jimmy checked into it. If you want to tell them about what the... Uh, it all depends on what you get. Basically, if you know anything about name brands, one's got a Caterpillar in it, one's got an Allison in it, and one's got a White in it, which is all readily available shelf parts from most any diesel place. And they, they said that they buy all their parts from Republic Diesel, which I'm very familiar with them. Uh, I'm sure you guys probably do too. Uh, they said that's where they get all their parts. 
Because if we have a massive... How much is the Allison? Oh, that one. Is that one right? um, it just says the 3rd has an Alice Chalmers. Yep, that's uh, it. We have one with an Alice Chalmers engine that was installed in 2004 with 314 <coughs> hours. That's the best one they've got. That would be basically brand new. Uh, and it yeah. is a up to a 60 yeah, kV, yeah. which would, we could power the city with and it. How much did you say that one was? Uh, how much did you say that one was? It's uh, uh, 80... Okay, I thought you said this was just a motor. They had to put it on that trailer and it would be 8,500. No, the, uh, that one, the Allison on the trailer is 8,500. Oh, okay, okay. That's putting it on the trailer. I'm it, right now, that one, they haven't got it sitting outside. It's in the warehouse because it's basically a brand new motor. It's probably still got the braking motor. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I mean, uh, we got to make a decision on whether we want to spend this money to put a generator down there or take a chance on them coming in and finding us and costing us a whole lot more than $8,500 for not having it. Like I said, I've seen the paperwork, I've seen the write-ups from them. So far it has not come to a violation, but I think it's... If they're looking for money, it will. Each one that I've seen is a little bit more hardly worded. Um, so I think we really need to step up and do this or we're going to get in a bunch of trouble. Are you looking to hardwire it or just have a, uh, uh, well, a pull, gross connection? Well, well if, if we did do this, what we would do, we would uh, go into the four lift stations and put pigtails on them. Yeah. So what I could do, because the way this system is set up, which is not a good one, but everything goes to one lift station. That's the only way to get to the plant. So what we would do, and then which we talked about the division of water is pump this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one. It'll be a nightmare but uh, as far as for, for us to keep up with. But that's the concept. Um, and then what needs done with the trees? They need cut. They need to be taken out. Uh, they they need, need cut completely back away from they the need, uh, Basically, we need to bring the truck in there and cut and shred them and get them out of there. Okay. Uh, the up upon. The first right up, we got rid of the ones on the upper pond. It wasn't near as many. Uh, Jimmy Hill and I cut all them out. There wasn't near as many. Uh, but this is a major undertaking for that side over there. Now, by doing the pigtails at each lift station and then at the pond, uh, you're also going to have to have a transfer switch in each place, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, there's going to be. If we make a motion, we're also going to have to include not just a generator, but wiring, connections, and transfer switches. On the truck, yes. On, yes. Uh, yeah, they'll have to be switches and pigtails put in at four lift stations. And, and uh, But I don't know. I can't talk for what they're going to find us, but I still think it's going to be less than yeah. what we're going to get. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm okay with yeah. doing it. It's yeah. just a matter of... Yeah, we have to add it all in there. Yes. And then the plant, I, can, I don't have to have it down there to run the plant for three days. If, we're without power for longer than three days, then I've got a run plan. I can let it sit there three days before I start getting bad samples. Uh, why, why don't I let some of them make the best suggestion what way we should go? And maybe that's, that's what that man do. That's right there, I say, you let them like say what, then we, like he's say, the expert, I do it. What, what he knows what do. he has to have to make yeah, this system run. Well, we want to talk around all this stuff. As, so as, get the best as far as my recommendation, I know it's more money. It's what, twenty-five hundred more, three hundred, three thousand more. Uh, three thousand more. But but you're getting you're looking at a difference of two thousand nine hundred fourteen working hours to three hundred fourteen working. And hours. you're looking at if you know anything about electricity, you're going from a cap of kV to a cap of sixty kV in that. And. I mean, God forbid we have a big disaster. So your recommendation is the $8,500 yeah. one? Yeah, that, yeah. Yes. The brand that's the brand To give you an idea of these power lines that you used to drive by going home, not your big ones, your normal ones, they're, they're carrying 7,200 kV, those power lines out there. And this generator is 60 of it. So you could run a lot of stuff in the event of a disaster other than what we're doing. I mean, it could be that what we're doing is kind of second thing. But in a big event, 
you could bring it up here. We could run the community yes. center. Oh, yeah. he, he's going to run the community center out here. He, there's already one sitting out here. Uh, out here. Uh, what could be on flat rate? Oh, uh, speaking of which, when was the last yes. time that was started? I don't that, uh, know what the big I didn't mean to ask you, but I haven't seen you ever come up here. It's going to be less the guy that came in and checked our fire system. He had asked me when the last time that was started. Which one day's time? It's supposed to start up once a week for 30 minutes. I've never heard it start up. I can start from the league. Uh, but he asked me when the last time we checked that, and I, I don't know. And he said, I that needs to be checked. But that, that would be my recommendation. Yes, yes. Because I think you're looking at, all together you're probably looking at less than 10 grand for, every, for the big tails and everything. And that's one day. One twenty-four hour period of time. Now, Jim, are you qualified to put these pigtails and these transfer no. switches? Oh, in? Yeah, yes, I can. I can those. Uh, below. I the just wonder if we're going to have to hire some construction. Below the disconnect, I can do it. Above the disconnect, I can. So, will this be below the where you can do it? Yeah, this will be below disconnect. Hopefully, it's below disconnect, or we're going to blow something up. Well, I mean, I just, yeah. I just need to know if we need to hire an electrician. To come I don't think we're going to have to. Okay. I don't think so. All right. I'll make a motion to purchase the generator for eighty-five hundred dollars and to but purchase all wiring connections and all transfer switches, all, all necessary equipment for hookup for the sewer. Just a question: Will be up on the road, and will be you told about how much money you told about an official inspection that's needed. You talking about the electric? Yeah. Um, that I don't know. He's still up or will we have to have an inspector? No, not that. No, it's ours. Right. That's ours? He said it's going to be less than two. We never did a Dow. We never did have one. I ran one of Dow. We never did have to have an you inspector know, for anything. We've got to look the less we can. <laughs> then then you, you can't backfeed through them. They get mad if you do that. Yeah, that's yeah. what that switch is for. Yeah. yeah. That like switch won't let you backfeed. Yeah. You going to do manual switches or automatic? I thought man probably ain't going to be Well, I mean, if you're pulling a trailer. Yeah, I'm going to be there. So a man will do it. It costs less. Now, as far as buying from them, I was told that everything was good to go, bring them check, take them check, whatever. But then I found out today that there's been some more paperwork sent, ain't been sent in. So we've got some more. Yeah, I just had to sign something yesterday. She brought to me. She said, now they want this signed because we you had to do set up an account with them. Right. <coughs> They've got to prove that we are a city and we can buy government property. That's what it was. All right, so we got a motion and we got a second. Yes. Um, all in favor? All opposed? The motion passes. All right, uh, next thing on the list, I don't know if anybody knew, I've been going to Frankfurt all day meeting with KLC, DLG, KIA um, over this sewer expansion project. Uh, we had to meet up there, it was kind of a, yeah, uh, we agreed to look at the CDBG grant the last time. <coughs> and anytime you do a CDBG grant, you have to meet with all these super big wheel people and discuss it and it's like a pre-application meeting well we went to this meeting today um and I oh, found out that, I'm sorry. Uh, well there was todd and i went from here um, because it would affect the county also they wanted him in on it also um then we had uh, daniel story from kipta we had larry brown which is governor's right hand man um jennifer peters a bunch of new people i've never met before um, but they seem to swing a very hard bat up there because when they talk, people was running. Um, and we talked to these people, and just remember there's a very big buck coming at the end of this. KIA, which is Kentucky Infrastructure Authority, when we give our pitch and we talk about Clay Kelly was there, um, KIA stepped up and said, well, I'm not supposed to release this information yet. She said, but I'll tell you anyway, because you're getting an email next week, that we have been approved for $1.8 million loan through KIA that the loan 
uh, if we accept it, it's automatic 50% forgiveness. So it will actually only have to pay back half of that on a 1% interest rate. And she went through it and said that everybody up there said that is the best loan you're ever going to find anywhere. Uh, well, if you're not even paying 100% back. Well, but I'd rather have the and with bird in the hand before we worry about whether we're going to take it or not. Yeah, yeah that's, you know, right. and that's what I've yeah, That's what I'm explaining now. The CDBG grant, if we still want to go with that, that will, like if it, say, two, just for math purposes, it'd be easier in my head. For if we take $2 million for, from KI uh, and it's 50% forgivable, so we can pay back one million. If we do the CDBG grant and they say, okay, you're asking for two million, we'll give you a million. KIA will still give us the other million, but we won't have to pay back 500,000. No matter how we go at it, KIA is only, they're giving us 50% forgivable. Uh, but to go through CDBG grant, we got a crap load of hurdles we got across because CDBG grant is very particular and have to have paperwork, I mean, to a T. Uh, so there's no guarantee we will get the CDBG grant. It is guaranteed right now that we will get the KIA loan. What is the match percentage on the CDBG? Uh, the match percentage, I'm wanting to say 80-20. This way they talked about it. They were throwing numbers around and all these people talking about super numbers and they lost me about halfway through it, but I understood the gist of it. Uh, the 80 20 would be one of the highest in they ever did. Yeah. That's, they said we were very high on the LMI scale, which is the low, uh, low median income. We were very high on that, and uh, the loan people really want to give us this money. They said we were approved, said it's, it's a done deal. All we have to do, they're going to send me an email. Well, next week and all i have to do they have a section on there you approve or you accept this uh loan or no you don't accept this loan well you'll have to call a special meeting when you get the paper in your hand yeah so um, we can read it i'm not doing it no no i'm just i'm they just giving it to you for free that's fine yeah but can you pay it back that's the question well i know i'm just bringing it to what i found out today that's a, just don't don't uh, don't get upset I, there's a very big butt coming from uh -huh. coming in all this a huge butt that's biting me in the ass all the time. Uh, but they're going to do all this, I mean, and they're going to push this through. And here comes the butt. They have to have all of our audits up to date within 60 well, days. Well, isn't that funny? Since we've been waiting to get a good one for six months again and still haven't got anywhere. And we have to have all of our audits up to date in 60 days. Now yeah, that'll be a trick. Now you got two months to do three hours. Yep. No. That's a lot of money for the city of day. Uh, everybody up there telling us the people of the CBDG said, you know, don't pass this off rook, but they don't offer this to everybody. Well, and it's probably we can't pay it back, good. you know. <laughs> if we could find the record, they tell you that. They tell you that, Joe. Yeah, they they do do that, Joe. And that's what I do. So don't even bring it up because yeah. we're not going to get an audit in three months for six years. Well, I'm letting you know what I found out today. This is the information I found out today. That's what we got to call the auditors and try to get these auditors started. Jennifer did get a note from them. They called her and uh, they said that they will take this. Tension Associates will take one our city audits, they want to start back with the one that actually they just, the no audit, that just got completed and to see what the problems were, to know where they need to begin on the next year's audits. Um, and they're supposed to be contacting us back to do this. Well, I'm just informing you the information I found out today. I mean, I'm not saying do it or not. This is what we found out today and what I was told. So I wanted to bring it to you all and let you all understand or let y'all hear what I found out today. I ain't saying we are going to do it. I ain't saying nothing. Well, that's, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter unless we yeah. get these audits done exactly. that we wanted to get done six months ago. I know that. Or a year ago. Um, Two years ago. That's what I'm saying. The audits are killing well, us. Well, if we can go ahead and get a move on the audits, that would also uh, allow us to apply for the road aid money that we haven't been... Well, and, and they also said that, you know, 
they cannot promise these terms next year, but we can always, always come back if we can't get our audits done within the 60 days. We can always come back next year and look at it again, but said they will not guarantee the same terms on all this. Well, we've all approved audits. You know, in January, so we're trying I mean, to get somebody in here. Uh, Jennifer had contacted here, like three or four, and she had to wait for them to contact her back. And Tensioner and Associates is the only one that contacted her back. And they said they would do it. And they said, from the sounds of it, you all need help on a federal level with someone with federal connections. And said that we have federal connections and we can help you out of that end. So we are going to go with Tensioner and Associates. And we just got to call them and get them out here as soon as they can and have them start digging through everything. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just informing you of what the meeting was today. Uh, we had to be there. It wasn't my choice, but we had to be there. Um, I don't think we should move forward on anything other than the audit. Yeah. And I don't know what the hell I wrote down on this last one for police reports. I don't know what that is. Probably. Mm -hmm. Thing and oh yes, the police reports too. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't want to have the police reports down for. Mm -hmm. And this QuickBook payroll stuff has been going told, on for a year. I have told Jennifer it better be started by the end of this month. Uh, you ask Jimmy, she can sit right in there in the office. Jimmy Hoskins, I told him if it's not done by this next pay period, it better be done by the end of the month because we keep getting. Well, we're waiting on checks. We're waiting on checks. I give me the phone number, I'll call them and see why we're still waiting on checks. Because if the first thing the auditors are going to do, they're going to see all these handwritten checks to all these people and they're going to throw it right out the window just like these people did. It's ridiculous. I agree with you. Good information. The reason I kind of went off on that was that not in the case. I recently bought a car. I could not prove it in one. They will not accept it. Jimmy, you, you know I've been fighting this you. for a year. So I ain't going to a car on my dark corner retirement. Guess what kind of interest rate I'm paying? It went from 2.4 to 11.6 and I'm paying because I can't prove I'm going It's costing me big time money. Plus, I had the privilege to put the $7,000 in my pocket in order to do it. I agree. It needs so, to be done and we're trying to get it done. I don't done. Think I think how much the checks cost. Or if the bank doesn't do audit, it doesn't have anything to do with the bank. You don't need the bank to print a check. Yeah. Oh, and something else was brought up the last meeting about a debit card, trying to get a debit card so we have a way to purchase it. After a little fiasco over a uh, aerator for the sewer plant uh, and, and us talking with UPS, they come out and set us up an account with UPS to be able to ship stuff off. Uh, and that was on like Thursday. So we decided, you know, okay, then what to do? If we call them, they come out, ship us, and they bill us that week, or whatever they pick up for, they wanted to pay it up front. The day afterwards, we get a note from Bedford Bank that they have approved that we get a debit card for our account up here. <laughs> so now we have a debit card, we're gonna be getting a debit card for our account, so we have something to where we can make on online payments or over phone payments. Um, but we also have the UPS account now. And uh, so that the, the credit card, the debit card thing has been taken care of. We're going to be getting that to the bank. Um, now we need to. But yeah, if probably, the QuickBooks isn't done by the end of the month, yep. I mean, it's gone on way too long. I asked and asked, and every time I asked Jeffrey, said, well, we still haven't received the checks. We still haven't. I said, why haven't we got checks? And something about they had to redo it because the printer we had, their system would not work Can with those checks. Can you call people that takes care of our computers that we hired to take care of all of our systems? Yep. And ask them to come down here and... Yeah, yeah, the, uh, DTS came yeah. on in. And he told me, standing right yeah. here, that he could help set that up and get it going. Yeah. Well, it and was, we're paying him. So it's, it's not as much. It has to be QuickBooks had to design a program to make our printer work for their system. Joe, I can that. Right. I believe I'm just going to yeah. say something. Yeah. Because I use QuickBooks in the drugstore yeah. on a computer that costs $55 yeah. and a printer that costs about the same will work fine. There's I'm not I'm just saying, this is what I'm told. Just give me a bunch of bull. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Okay. But, uh, 
I mean, that, that, I can, all I can do is go by what I'm told. But I, I'll take it. And, uh, I will, uh, if something isn't done in the next day or so, I will contact QuickBooks myself and find out where the hell our checks are. Because um, I'm tired of every time they just, we're waiting on the checks. We're waiting or on the we're checks. We're paying this DTS, tell them to get down here, get it set up, put some checks in a printer, and get it going. This is. The not be all hard, man. Uh, I sit right there and ask him. Right and and said he would do it. He said that's elementary. Yeah. We're in with the quarter from that. <laughs> but, uh, but we're doing. We're doing some other stuff. Yes. Well, I think a lot of the big hang-up was, was somebody brought up in the last meeting, they want to start putting invoices on the computer, uh, start doing the invoices on the QuickBooks. And when that was brought up, it was, she it kind of got, the payroll kind of got pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And Jim can attest, he was in the meeting I had with him and her. I told her, don't worry about anything else. I want payroll going, if not this next paycheck, by the end of the month, it better be up and rolling. I said, the hell with everything else. Don't worry about putting these invoices in. I want it up and running by the end of this month. So we have uh, W-2s. We have check stubs coming out. So they have proof of their income. Well, all Jennifer has to do with the invoices is make a stack of them and give them to the girl that's putting the other QuickBooks stuff in that we're paying them to do that. <sighs> that that's... <laughs> I mean, does she even come up here and do it? She or comes how, up here. How many hours she spend here? Um, come on. She was just up there. Yeah, she's just up there. How long she stayed? About an hour? Uh, about two hours. About two hours. So we're paying her two? She come every week for two hours? I don't know if it's every week. No, it's not every okay. week. We're paying her hundred dollars a month. She needs to be up there more than that. Yeah. Me, I mean, this is, I don't know what to do. I know, I'm telling you, I'm tired of it too. I, mean, I just went off this past week. Uh, I've gotten several things taken care of because of it. Do we need to get rid of her and find somebody that can run the QuickBooks? This Melissa person that was... Melissa Pollock. Yeah, of course. But yes, we need to get rid of her and find somebody that's going to spend more than two hours a month for $100. Yeah, right. She ain't worth 50 bucks an hour. I think she can go her days off. That's all just idea. I had nothing to do with setting it up. I don't know what the stipulations yeah. were. Uh, you know, but we're losing control. Exactly. I mean, we, the audit we got is crap. We haven't started another one. None of the QuickBook stuff has been done. I'm just, there's, I don't know what to no do. Oversight. You know, I work 40 hours a week, or I'd be up there in that office getting it all straightened out. But I'm not. Have we got straightened out now? What auditor are we going to get? Yes, Kitchener Associates. He called the other day. He said as soon as he could uh, schedule a time to come, he would contact us back. But I'm going to contact him in the morning uh, to see what's going on. Yeah. We want somebody to kind of. Yeah. I want. I want to know what's going on. Kind of let us know what's, what we. I'm tired. The way things are going. I, I hate this. Wait, 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 wait. If I got something to do, get it done, move on to something else. And this wait, wait, wait. Yeah. These other people telling us we have to wait. We have to wait. We have to wait. To, yeah. Um, but if we don't have somebody confident take care of these invoices and fix, doing the QuickBook financials and all that, we'll never get a good audit. Exactly. Have we got anybody in mind we could do? The only person I know that everybody talks around here about QuickBooks is Lee Collins. And I don't well, think he's, he's got a job. job. Yeah. He ain't got time to go Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, anytime anything's asked about QuickBooks, it's a Lee Collins. Why do you need Lee Collins? It's already set up. Yeah. No, Jimmy, we are paying a woman to come in here and run that part of the QuickBooks. Well, then, why hasn't anybody shown her how to do it? No, no, no. No, no, no. That's part of her job, and then this is that hard one on QuickBooks. They give you a tutorial. That's what I'm saying. You got, you're paying another girl to do it, right? Yeah, you're, you're, in notes, right? Yep. you're writing handwritten right. checks, which I think is bogus. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and Jennifer, you can you learn that easy, couldn't you? Okay. Yeah. All right. Take those two, bring that guy in here, sit in with them, show them how to do it. You should be able to take off and get rid of the third person. 
I agree, but I wasn't going to put that third person in there. And when, I understand that, but if the third person is doing the other two, yeah. what the other two can do, you know. Yeah. And I'm not trying to throw anybody out, but oh, this no. has been going on for years. We've got, yep, and it's got to change a, a route that saves us money, in other words. We don't, well, I'm going to make a motion, first of all, the work. that we tell Melissa Pollock that she has to spend more than two hours a week up here, and she's going to have to start entering the invoices in on the QuickBooks, or we're going to have to find somebody else to do it. So she's got a month, or until the end of June, to figure out how she's going to work that in. All right, there's been a motion made. Anybody want a second? We'll second. All in favor? And then the QuickBooks payroll goes right along with that. Yeah. We yeah. need to get that DTS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, I am calling about these audits tomorrow. I will call so I will get in touch with QuickBooks tomorrow to find out why our checks have not come yet. And on a good note, we have a new enforcement officer that's been doing an amazing job. Yes, and we have a new uh, two new members on the enforcement board, and I've asked Kilda to let put it in the paper and let everybody know that we're not messing around anymore. And yeah, um, speaking of which, uh, they want to the code enforcement board wants us to put an ad in the paper telling that we have a new enforcement board and putting the people's names on there. Uh, the only problem I had here, uh, Je uh, Jeff brought this up. He wants all the ordinances posted in there. And well, I don't you know, know what that's going to cost us if we put all them ordinances in that paper? Well, I've already talked to Hilda about it, so I don't know what she has in mind. Just, have, just have if anybody has any questions well, about the ordinances. Maybe a paper tomorrow or Thursday, like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not telling you what I put in there ahead of time. That's not ethical. Okay. So Hilda has, is going to have something in the paper on Thursday. Okay. But, for the most part, everybody is paying attention. I've written several notices. I've given everybody warnings because basically everybody thought that we had planning and zoning coming. That's up in the air. We have ordinances to go by, and everybody complains on Facebook everywhere. We don't want planning and zoning, but we do. But we have the ordinances to do everything they want. Now they're great because we're enforcing the ordinances. But that's just tough. We're going to enforce these ordinances, and it doesn't matter who it is, they're going to clean up. And so far, about 80% of the town has cleaned up. And there's a few that's being stubborn. Joe and I have argued with one. He said, what if you, I don't do what I'm supposed to do. What are you going to do then? I'm going to write you a citation. You're going to pay a fine. If you're glad not to pay it, fine. We'll attach it to your taxes. Yeah, the other one told me I was the devil. They had proof the devil was back on earth. He is the, the devil. devil. Yeah, he didn't ask Jimmy. He said there no her, her no conversation. I'm the devil. But you and, know when I left here and got home, that arm's over. Yep, she's scared of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and next meeting, Will and I will have some, uh, and we've shown it to Joanne, uh, an ordinance that. Oh, right, 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 right. The fire department had, we'll, and we'll discuss that next meeting about how we can maybe implement that as part of the enforcement process. Well, get with me also on that. We will. And there, there's a lot of people complaining about buildings now. They've gone from the grass to the buildings. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I can what Well, I, can I do. have a binder. I went to <coughs> the BAD conference, yeah. blighted and dilapidated. That's what I was going to ask you about. So name. Jeff's going to go through that and he can get with you on the road code. Because I'm getting a lot of complaints on two or three houses and we've got to do something because i got an anonymous letter. Well, actually I just found that binder and I gave it to Jeff, told him to go through there because it's from the state of Kentucky, yeah. abandoned and that blighted is, that's property. That's the whole other state right there. Yeah. So if you accept that, that oversees any building that's the code that you have in the code. Oh, okay. If you accept that state law, the state's the umbrella. Yeah, it, an umbrella is everything, basically. Uh, this might be part of the team. Oops. That might be part of the team. Why don't you just this send might me? Be. I'll just give you this whole folder and let you see okay. what part of it. Uh,
Hey, Will. And, uh, Give me a day. Yeah. When, I don't think I have any. I look at my calendar at work and I don't he just got an ID card maker. Uh, I don't know if he's got it hooked up yet, but he just got. Will you Since check? Um, uh, there are any days Right now, we don't have football. Uh, but when we have football, and I'll have to do the morning by. Okay. Um, from eight to noon, right there. For the football? Yeah, for the football until school starts back, and then it'll go after school. Uh, so. Three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, probably better for me. Well, you can see what I've got going on over here. And it only gets worse. The more months you flip, it gets worse. How about Thursday the 30th at like 3 o'clock? First person mask, you get it at 3 o'clock? Yeah. Okay, if there's no more I move business, thank you, sir. Give a second. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you all very much for showing up.